It's July 26, 2022, and you're watching the Blanco. Well, no, you're not. You're watching <laughs> In the Hangar, and we've got Juan Brown. Here we go. Hello, everyone. You're not watching Blanco Lirio. You're watching In the Hangar. We're doing a special on location at the Flying Ice booth here at Air Venture with airplanes flying around. Great energy. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Wong. Today's episode is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Flying Ice. If you happen to be here, stop by their booth. Check out their uh, cool sunglasses and uh, use our discount code, taking off all caps one word, for 10% off. And you can do that either on location here or online. And speaking of online, we've got Colton Mortgage as a sponsor. And if you need that residential or refi, go to coltontakingoff.com. And we're sponsored by Marshall Protection, Protective Services, Nick Olson. All these guys are pilots. Let's support our pilot community. Uh, we love our sponsors. Now, we are not on the Blanco Lirio no, we are not. show, but we do have Blanco Lirio, Juan we Brown here. We brought Blanco Lirio to you guys. So, we Juan, did. thanks for coming. Sure. Great setup you got here at AirVenture 2022. Thanks for having me. A little bit different than when I had a couple cameras out at Harvey last year. Yes, this is <laughs> quite the professional setup. We got no less than three cameras here. No, we have five. Five? five. Yeah, oh, we got boy. some hidden ones. <laughs> So we're making sure we get your best side, Juan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> My hair. <laughs> okay, so Juan, uh, while we have you here, let's let, we we can talk about a whole bunch of different things. But mm -hmm. let's start with talking about YouTube. We had a big uh, uh, meeting yesterday, meet and greet with fans, with a lot of different YouTubers. You were there, we were there. One of the questions that was presented to you was uh, about. Um, your motorcycle and and, and off-road adventure kind of mm -hmm. content versus aviation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, what when do you when do you split the channel up? Uh, is a question I've been struggling up with for a long time. Or should you even split the channel up? And the general feedback I'm getting from most viewers is that they enjoy both types of content. They enjoy the variety. I'm thinking I'm just going to keep it on one channel for now, but definitely there is a drop off in viewership when you shift gears from the primary focus of your channel. And then the primary focus of my channel has shifted over the years, but right now it's aircraft accidents and aircraft accident reviews and aviation oriented stuff. So when I shift away from that, you definitely see the viewership decrease, but there's still a big appreciation for that diverse content. Yeah, so there's certainly the, uh, you know, the motorcycle audience is very similar to the aviation audience. Very loyal. Very. I mean, we all share this kind of same kind of um, on the edge of danger thing. So we all kind of recognize. A lot that. of pilots are motorcyclists, and vice versa. Yeah. So I'm surprised that it's it's not bigger. And, and I think that the motorcycle channels overall have a bigger following than the aviation. I channels. don't. I think that I find the motorcycle audience to be smaller. But maybe that's because of the nature of my uh, uh, of of my audience and especially the off-road motorcycle and adventure motorcycle niche seems like a, seems I was going to say that seems like a very small niche. Yeah, and and so it gets narrowed down pretty quick for okay, me anyways. Okay, so you're taking you're not just motorcycle, you're getting a very small segment of that motorcycle. Yeah, audience. and and we're we're on point trying to promote a very specific part of motorcycling that's off-road adventure motorcycling going lightweight minimalist and <laughs> enjoying the ride and getting away from these giant motorcycles go farther go faster and when you go lighter so the equivalent would be a uh, back flying in a nothing larger than a a, a two-seat airplane. <laughs> well, right. not well. No, just take something like a like a carbon cub or a husky. And, but, but that's just all go, your content is about. And just go minimalist on the maybe equipment. like a luscum. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah, a like a luscum. Well, you got to be careful doing that. Well, I would so, recommend taking a luscum. I, I would say, as a viewer mm -hmm. for YouTube, my favorite would probably be we have a channel, you know, and then you just create different playlists for each one. Yeah, so. that's important to. Yeah, exactly. Keep up with the playlist. I'll be honest. I'm too lazy to switch back and forth between channels. I just want to go to that channel, and mm -hmm. then if I want to watch the motorcycle stuff, I'll just go to the playlist of the motorcycles mm -hmm. and watch that. But then if I want the air crash stuff, mm -hmm. then I'll go to that playlist. And we had a nice conversation with Mentor Pilot over in um, oh, Spain, yeah. and because um, he's he's separated, he it. has successfully done two different channels. And what he has found is that well, for one thing, he's gotten so popular. Uh, that he's gone ahead and hired up some professionals to help him yeah. with editing and that sort of thing. So now he's doing long format 
historical accident aviation reviews or stories, and that requires weeks of editing. And then there's, like on the Blanco Lirio channel, there's news right now. Right. And you need to get that out quick. Right. And so he's he's got uh, Mentor Pilot and Mentor Now. But it took, I mean, it took me a year to find out that the, he even had done that. Right. And so how do you get... If you started a new channel, it would take a long time to get that channel built well, up. Well, maybe. I mean, you look at Bobby White of uh, Sailing Doodles. So mm -hmm. uh, Bobby uh, had his sailing channel, and it was doing really, really good. And then he decided he would uh, create a flying one where he would go fly with somebody and, 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 create, and create flying doodles. I remember when he did that, he uh, got to 20,000 subscribers within a few weeks. For his new channel. For his new channel, because mm. you know he advertised it on his old, old channel, mm -hmm. but it did did decent. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's at now. I, I mean, I, I looked at that a couple of years ago. Yeah, but did it did it pop? It did it continue yeah, to grow? It, you know, I, I don't know the. Yeah. I, I could look that up, but. So that's that's a good question. I don't know. I think I'm just going to keep it on one channel for now. Yeah, because I've thought about like, do I put pilot stories on its own channel? Do I put in the hangar on its own channel? Because I've had some brand confusion. People think our channel's called In the Hangar. But no, the channel's called Taking Off. We have a show in the hangar. Yeah, good point. And so there's there's a little bit of confusion. I don't know if mm -hmm. I should split that off. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it all on one. I, I And just keep the playlist. That's my recommendation. Yeah, and do the playlist thing. Good. All right. Well, let's talk about news, aviation news, because you and I both do that. We do that on Taking mm -hmm. Off. You do that on yours. Um, I find that to be some of the the, uh, the best performing content, mm -hmm. but I... For, I'm so busy, you got to be right on the spot on that. I don't know how you do it. That's another good point. Here I am goofing off in the month of July. I did that big motorcycle ride, and now I'm out here at Air Venture, and I'm away from the Blanco Lirio supercomputer. Things are happening, and people are asking, where's the update on this, that, and the other yeah, thing? Yeah, we've had so many crashes. Yeah. I mean, just in a short time, there were four 210 crashes like my plane, and I haven't had time to do Yeah, and so that kind of straps you back to the computer. Now, I could do, and I should do, probably some quick field updates, but now I've got this product where I'm showing you all this important Hi. detailed stuff that I can't really do very effectively in the field other than hold a cell phone up to a iPad and with a glaring light and try to show you all the data uh, that I'm trying to share with you. So uh, it's if challenging you get away from sure. the studio, uh, there's another reason for, for viewership to well, drop off. That's my challenge, honestly, is I know a lot of times uh, Dan will be like, hey, Christy, I, I, you know, I need you to do this rant. And I'm like, oh, I'm on the hotel van going to the airport to fly <laughs> yeah. for the next several hours. And I'm unable to do it. Yeah, you've got to keep your head in the game. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, what do you do there? So then Dan winds up picking up a lot of those. Mm -hmm. I do them from time to time, like from the hotel room if I can or on location, wherever. But Yeah, that's a good. And I've done that from the hotel room where it's quiet enough where you can get a quick update out. But, right. But you can't do your supercomputer. Uh, right. Yeah, well, and so. the other challenge I have, too, is I might be there. I'll, uh, like, there's been a couple times where I'm like, oh, good, I'm here. And I, I go ahead and film it on my cell phone, but then I can't get the data to him for editing. Mm -hmm. Because the hotel Wi-Fi, I don't have service, yep. et cetera. Timely. Like, that happened a couple of times, I know. We tried to get it out to you, and then it was just like, oh, and then the, the trend has passed. You know, you mm -hmm. get it the next day, and it's too late. You know? Yeah, well, sometimes, yeah. yeah. It's, sometimes. sometimes it's okay to wait because sometimes some more important details from the story come out that yep. will add significantly to the information. Oh, often I've shot it, I'm editing, and now a new piece has come yep. out. Yeah. Yep. So right. Or right after I release it, new information comes I'm out. I'm finding it's not important to be so much the first out there, but just to take a little time and get the most accurate overall picture in yeah, a fairly that's my timely thing. fashion. I would rather have like quality mm -hmm. over the quantity. I mean, timing is also important, but for me, it's the accuracy of mm -hmm. it. There have been a couple times where we did do a story, and I know like on my part, I messed up and people called me out on it. And I, I think like an episode or two later, I was like, I'm so sorry. You know, like this, this oh, has. It's happened to me a lot. I mean, this as, has been Because really what we've done in your channel, my channel, some of the other channels, we've entered the world of journalism mm. and, and, and uh, news journalism. Mm -hmm. And there are best practices. There are ethics and things that the news journalists do that we're not aware of. Which I've never been formally trained on. Right, right. Same. And so, um, but what I appreciate about yours is that you're following some of the best practices. You're, mm. you're, you're not offering speculation or mm -hmm. opinion as fact. 
where some do. Mm. And I think that's that's what drew me to you originally. Mm -hmm. When um, when I watched the first video, I remember it. I watched of yours was the the Addison King Air crash, mm -hmm. and you sat there and. You you told us when it was your speculation. Mm -hmm. You told us what the facts were. You were just straight up. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, we need more of that. Yep, yep. Yeah, we need less speculation, less or jumping to conclusions. Less blaming, less yeah. fighting. Blaming doesn't yeah. help anybody. No. Especially early on. We don't even know what the full story is yet. Well, and the thing is, is that we can take the, like, we can come to a conclusion with the information that we have, mm -hmm. but we're not the NTSB. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have that kind of information that they're going to have. They're going to have the nitty gritty details oftentimes that we don't get to see that could sometimes change the game. Yep. Well, that's just happened to me recently. I did an airplane investigation video a while back. Yeah. And I've been, I wanted to do a follow up. And so I've started diving deeper, and I've gotten further than I ever thought I could do. It's an ancient crash, and I was able to talk to an eyewitness yesterday, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact. And the things that I've learned totally negate my conclusions that I made on my first video. And <laughs> You're um, shoot the whole thing over again. Yeah, so, you know, it's, uh, you know, what are you going to do? And that's a whole other interesting genre is, would be to go back and do these historic things. I always thought that historic crashes have already been so Overdone. well covered mm. and the story is already so well known that I didn't see much of a need to go do that. But it seems like there's still people that want to see your individual take on it. They want to see what, what I have to say about this accident from so many years ago. You know what? I agree with that. Yeah. So like way back when I was just a wee little student pilot, I mean, we've talked about this before. I'm fascinated with air crash investigations mm -hmm. because it's always about what you take away from it, what you learn. Mm -hmm. So I would start watching those like Mayday episodes, yeah. you know, the air crash investigations. But then there's another show called Seconds from Disaster. Mm -hmm. And there's been some crossover like type episodes where it's like the same crash, but told from a different, you know, viewpoint. And I'll watch one and then I'll go watch the other one. Yeah. And uh -huh. be, it's the exact same crash but it's like you said from a different viewpoint and to me that's just fascinating hmm. and now mentor pilots doing it yep. and um we've kind of gotten into i'm really fascinated we've, in some of the ga crashes mm -hmm. yeah so you know with with me being ga now chrissy's moving it has moved into the 121 world and you doing really good in the 120 world and G, 121 world and ga um i was trying to do if i do a commercial crash if i do a 121 crash i try to do it from a GA perspective and mm -hmm. what we can pull to make mm -hmm. us better GA pilots. But I have gone back and done some historical crashes, you know, American Airlines 191 and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But the problem, I've had mixed results. Some of those have done really good, some of them not so good. Hmm. So I don't know on the historical. Yep. Like yeah. we've got one that we shot. Can I tell them? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, What'd so, you okay, this is really weird, yeah. oh, like interesting. So I, I was told about the John Denver crash. Mm -hmm. Now, I've never really been that interested in like John Denver or whatever, but um, I told Dan, I was like, you know what? I'll take a crack at it. He's one of the best voices in well, country yeah, music see, ever. I, no, 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 I was. Young, yeah, I, yeah, like I didn't grow up on his music. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know who John Denver is. He's the Rocky Mountain High guy, mm -hmm. you know? But I didn't really know that much about him. But as I started like investigating the story, and learning about it, I became enthralled. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I, I don't know why I had it in my head that he like crashed in a mountain or something, which is like no. definitely not what happened. <laughs> I live near there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, and you know what's crazy? The same runway that he took off from yeah. the last time, yeah. I have flown in, into and out of that airport. Yeah. And it hit me. I was just there a couple weeks ago and, it, mm -hmm. and I took off on that runway and it really hit me because I got to do the takeoff and I was yeah. like, wow, this is where that happened, yeah, you know? Right and, there. you know, but like when this video, we already shot it, we, it needs to be edited and stuff. It's gonna come out in a month or so. Uh, October. Yeah, October, cause that's the anniversary of mm -hmm. when it happened. But it's it's fascinating. Cause you, I really got to know John Denver as a person, yep. which plays into oh, why yeah. he got into that crash. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm really digging this aspect of it and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna try to do more of those. Okay, good. Like high yeah. high profile, even low profile GA cases mm -hmm. like that, you know, they have a good story to them and something to take away from them. Yeah, something absolutely, to learn from. absolutely. Good. good, good. Where are you heading with the channel? Other than uh, keep creating. on keeping on what I'm doing. He's gonna keep on one browning yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's I don't really have it, any particular like... goal or direction at this time, other than just trying to keep up. 
just trying to keep going with and, it. And so, I mean, you're back 121 flying. Is that going? And you're going to be doing that for what? You know, for a long time now. Well, well I mean, Juan's only like. 40. No. Oh, so, you got so he's, he's got, got a long, long years. time to go. I'll be 60 here in November, and uh -oh. uh, the mandatory retirement age is 65. And you think so I got to make a decision? Do you think that'll yeah, change? Think yeah. Well, there's the legislation. They just were introduced What's in the, the legislation. So yeah. 67 is what they're asking for now. Oh Federal legislation. Yeah. Federal legislation. They was into, it was thing, literally, 67. I saw yesterday it was introduced. Yeah. You get seven more years now, Juan, uh, not five. <laughs> they keep, and I feel like Yosarian and Catch-22, they get keep to, moving the number of gonna missions He's going to get to 66 and a half, here. and that's when they're going to go for 82. <laughs> oh, man, Just until kidding. you can pass a class one. Basically, Boy. as long as you can pass a class one. Mm, yeah. But, I mean, a lot of airline pilots, they do medical out before they even hit the 65. Unfortunately, oh, yeah, yep. so oh, yeah, yeah. so there is that. Mm -hmm. You know, yep, it's uh, and, uh, and there's big pay raises coming for everybody as well. We got yes, this inflationary time going on, and we've got contracts are long overdue, and they're they're getting resolved quickly, and it's a tumultuous time yeah. in the 121 world. Switching topics. Yeah, 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 yeah. let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah. So it's how's your 121 career thing going? Wild. Like yeah. in a good way, in a yeah. really, really good way. I, so in the forum we had yesterday, you know, I was mentioning how I left a really good paying career previously mm -hmm. to become a broke CFI yeah. and work my way back up. I basically started all the way over again, which a lot of people do. And I'm happy to be inspir you know, inspirational in that aspect because mm -hmm. I had a lot of people come up to me afterwards like, oh my God, I want to do that. I'm terrified. How do you do it? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, I am happy to say that I am now making what I was making before, and it's all uphill from That here. quick. That quick. That's well, a, a just, real sign of the times right there. It is a crazy type of aviation. Who would have thought? Yeah. You know, when I did my first Discovery flights in 2007, mm -hmm. first year FOs were, well, first of all, you, you only had to have 250 hours and a commercial license wet, you know, mm -hmm. with a multi, um, or commercial certificate, excuse me. You know, um, but... They were making somewhere between twelve and twenty thousand dollars a year, depending on where you went. Yeah. I mean, like not even living wage. And See, now here, I, here I am. That caused the pilot shortage. Of right. Exactly. Because I, I looked at that when I was, it's you know, 23, no 24 years old. I was like, I can't afford to yeah. do that. It cost. At that time, it was going to cost me like forty grand just to get those ratings and get that. And now it's even more. Now it costs like 90 grand just to get the ratings, and that's not even getting you to 1500. Now you gotta get a job or pay to build the time to get to the 1500. So now we're in this crazy pilot shortage. Well, now you're we gonna get a return on that investment much quicker. Now you are, yes. Yeah. We didn't know that then, though. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, um, I have friends that are my age that did the traditional path. They went to school to become a pilot. Now I've got a really good friend of mine who uh, he, we jokingly call him the old eagle guy, you know, because he was at, you know, um, he was at my regional mm -hmm. back in 2007, 2008, you know. Um, he hung in there through the recession. He, you know, flew the time. And he, I think he was there for, like, what, 12 years or something? Yeah. Float up to mainline. And now I make more money than him. <laughs> See, oh, wow. The, we hear that. We hear that now wow. uh, on the mainline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're making more money than us. Right, you exactly. you do the overtime and the, all that. Oh, no. Uh, My, st like, later, literally, like, with the, stra like, stray pay and stuff like that. Well, yeah, with the overtime, they they are offering. Now, I do want to clarify with, with some of the stuff that's out there, this so they did give us a raise, a baseline mm -hmm. raise, mm -hmm. okay? Um, we are getting a pilot like premium, a pilot shortage premium for the next two years, hmm. which effectively, it gives us 150% of that new wage. So that's where I'm making more money than Good. that. Wow. So, um, I mean, I'll just be transparent. I mean, I, I, you know, wholly owns of American Airlines right now make, you know, anywhere from like 90 to 100 and something dollars an hour. I'm on that three year pilots pay scale. So mm -hmm. I'm making 105 an hour right now. Good. But that's only until August of 2024. Yeah. Now, they are That's right seat. That's right seat mm -hmm. as an FO. Mm -hmm. That's not captain pay. Yeah. Now, if I pick up overtime, if the company declares super critical coverage, we get 300%. 300. So that yeah. means I would make 315 an hour. So that's where everybody's blowing up right now about how that's much money we're making. Triple 7 pay. But <laughs> But here's the thing is that this is also what people don't realize is that that goes in seniority. Mm -hmm. So I'm like in like the, everything. Yeah, I'm about I'm right in the middle of the pack now, which is crazy. Yeah. Like how long have you been there? You just got there a year ago or something. Well, didn't you? so technically I've been there for like 
over two years, but then I was yeah. furloughed. Yeah. But seniority wise, I've been there for over two years and I, now I'm in the top 50%. Wow. I, I think I was at like 45% or something like that. when I, I was on reserve for 17 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, again, a sign of the times. Yeah. But, um, but uh, so I don't know, I get, I get slim pickings when it comes to overtime. I, I might get like two trips a month of overtime mm -hmm. um, yeah, if I'm lucky, which is not good. terrible. But even my base pay right now, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. Mm -hmm. There has never been a better time to become an airline pilot or a pilot in general because I know the corporate uh, carriers are also starting to increase their wages to keep up yep. with the demand. Everybody else. So it's, you'll get a good return on your investment, get the loan, get the money, get the ratings, and then get the job and it will pay off very quickly. Yeah. I mean, I was happy to do it when I got hired at like fifty dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what I intended. But now you're a little happier at yeah. three hundred an hour. The warrior's happier. I just got a thousand dollars in far, oil. So after seventeen the passion years is of a reserve, lot at three hundred an hour. <laughs> well, and you know what's funny? Like that's what we hear too from the mainline guys. You know, when they're on the jump seat, most of them are very happy. They're like, you know what? Good for you guys. You know, there's that occasional guy, though, that's like, what the heck, man? Yeah. And, and I totally get that. I totally get that because, like I said, I was there. I was that, like, youngling that wanted to be a pilot that couldn't do it. I'm so fortunate that the industry is allowing me around and to do that now. Pattern negotiation. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so, Juan, thank you so much again for join, joining us on the In the Hangar. Sure. No sweat. It's always a blast. Yeah. It's starting to get hotter, but uh, it's not no sweat yet. Not but. yet, but we got a good uh, shade here at least. That's good. It's good oh, to hang and, out with some professionals that know what nice, they're doing here. It's nice seeing you're part of the Flying Eyes family. Well, sure. <laughs> I these yeah, you got to hang on to these glasses. You hang on to them tight if you're out motorcycle riding with these. They're so lightweight uh, <laughs> for fitting under your headset that if you're motorcycling and you're in an open face helmet. You almost forget they're there. You're almost, and, the, and they're the going to blow but off. They slide in and out. Of <laughs> yeah. The helmet. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So they're so good. That's good. All right, good guys. For that. Thank you for watching uh, this episode of In the Hangar with Juan Brown from Blanco Lirio. Blanco we Lirio. are sponsored by Flying Eyes. He's part of our Flying Eyes family now. And woo, listen to that. AT6. Warp. You don't even have to. Yeah. Yeah. Was that, oh, no, no. That was a Beach 18. I was wasn't it? it sounded like a radio. Yeah. Youngkin's Beach 18. What was it, boys? I was actually going to say it sounds like a tri-motor. Sounds like a tri-motor. That was three engines, okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're uh, big losers here on Name yeah. That Plane yeah. from the sound. but uh, <laughs> These guys. But you won't be a big loser if you buy some flying eyes. Use the taking off, all caps, one word code. And we're also sponsored by... Colton Mortgage. Colton Mortgage. And Marshall Protective Services. Marshall Protective Services. Colton, Colton Taking Off and MPS Protects. All of them pilots. Help us out by helping them out. That's awesome. So, as always, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you next time. In the hangar. See you here. <laughs> oh, we should have had you close it out. Oh, yeah, see you next time. On the Walker Channel. Good job. It's always fun with you. We can talk.